Hello everyone and welcome to my Zero to Hero 5M development tutorial in Lua. Uh, this is the very first episode and the goal with this tutorial series is to get you started creating 5M resources and scripts. Uh, and then in later episodes we'll dive into some more advanced techniques and just things that are good to know, neat features that I've found, um, and just kind of how to level up as a developer. So coming into this tutorial series, it does uh, expect that you have a little bit of working knowledge about programming. It's something that you're somewhat familiar with. You certainly don't need to be an expert in anything, um, but some familiarity with uh, programming paradigms and practices is good to know, as well as uh, maybe some familiarity with Lua. Fortunately, Lua is a really simple language to learn. I'm a really big fan of Lua, so you shouldn't have too hard of a time picking it up at all. Uh, to kick things off, just to share a little bit about myself, I'm a professional software engineer. I've been working uh, professionally in engineering, typically on the web side, for about nine years now, uh, across a range of industries from commodities trading to agriculture and real estate. And I've also been a 5M developer for around three years now, running a, a pretty sizable community called Encore RP until we closed it earlier this year. So that's a little bit about me. Um, what we're going to cover in this episode is just getting your 5M server running. So downloading the server, getting it going, uh, everything you need to know to actually get connected to a local server and run around in it. That's what we're going to cover. And we're going to we're going to tackle two different approaches here, TX Admin and Vanilla, which I will dive into a little bit later. Before we do anything, though, the first thing that you'll need to do is get a license key for 5M. So 5M is completely free. You don't need to pay anything to get a license key or to use 5M or to run a 5M server. Um, and the way you get a license key is first you'll need a forum account at forum.cfx.re. These links are pretty easy to find from the 5M docs or even the homepage. Once you've got a uh, account here, you'll wanna go to keymaster.5m.net. And in here, you'll be able to register a license key, which you'll then use um, once you're setting up your server. Now, there are some features that aren't included in free license keys, and for those, you would need a Patreon subscription. There's a couple tiers of Patreon subscriptions to 5M, um, the, the, the lowest that gives you any sort of meaningful benefits being Argentum, uh, and uh, the, the, the highest being Platinum. Um, and these features range from, at the lowest level, you get 64 slots on one thing, so that's 64 concurrent players, some cosmetics in the server list, or the server um, search for your server. Uh, Orem includes 128 slots and uh, some more cosmetics. And then same with Platinum is going to give you uh, 2,048 slots and more cosmetics. Now, one thing that's important to know if you're developing a server and you, for example, need to test your custom clothing or something like that, is that you don't actually have to pay to get access to all of the um, paid features. So as long as you set your slot count to eight or less, you can access all of these features, including custom closed streaming for free, which is really great for development. You're not going to need to spend any money while you're building out your server and eight slots is, you know, more than enough for you and a couple testers or other developers to work together on it. So as I mentioned today, we're going to be looking at two different ways of setting up your server. Uh, one of them is using TX admin and the other one is what they call a vanilla installation. So uh, TX Admin is a really useful utility built on top of 5M that adds a bunch of features that are very useful in a production environment. Um, so it offers easy remote management of your server, stopping, restarting, um, automatic scheduled restarts, restarting resources, performance monitoring, player management, um, allow lists, ban lists, sending warnings to players, kicking players, and things like that. Um, as well as it offers, it now offers some in-game tools for spectating players and things like that. So TX Admin is really useful in a production environment. There's also what they call a vanilla FX server, which is just running the bare bones server itself. No, no fanciness, no web GUI, nothing else on top of it. I think nowadays most, most developers are probably running TX Admin in production. Um, I personally use vanilla FX server in development because I don't really need like player management and all of that stuff. Uh, you know, uh, automatic restarts or any of those features that TX Admin offers um, in my local development environment. So I prefer to keep things dirty, fast, and bare bones with a vanilla FX server when I'm developing locally. And then when I'm running a public server, then I'll uh, use TX Admin. So we're going to run through the both ways that you set it up and uh, look at how that process goes. So the first one that we're going to start with is TX Admin because that's the easiest. And all of the links that I've mentioned here, things that you might need to, to access are going to be down below in the description. So definitely check that out. 
Uh, but the basics for a TX admin setup is that we're just going to go to the archive server for Windows, because that's what I'm on, and download the latest recommended build. Um, there are lots of builds. There's usually multiple builds a day. You can see there were three of them yesterday alone. Um, but 5M will tag certain ones as recommended, and uh, that's going to have the longest uh, support period for it. So let's just go ahead and download the latest recommended. And then if we open this up, we got a whole boatload of files. We're going to want to drop this somewhere convenient on our computer. I've just created a uh, folder here on my desktop called 5M where I'm going to drag all of these files into. And with that out of the way, um, all we're going to do is we're going to locate FX server, the executable in this new folder that we have, and double click it. And it should open a tab in your browser to localhost 4120, which is the port for TX Admin's control panel. Um, and it's probably going to autofill this for you. If not, the pins over here in your console and hit link account. And then you are going to connect your 5M account or your 5M forum account, which you hopefully already have. And now we'll just create a backup pass password in case things go haywire. Obviously a good idea to write this down somewhere safe. I use a password manager. And now we're gonna jump right into kind of the quick setup from TX Admin. So this is what's really great is there's not a whole lot of configuration that has to be done. It's gonna do 90% of the work for you. Uh, so we're just going to give ourselves a server name. And now it's gonna ask us for a deployment type. Another neat feature of TX Admin is that they have some pre-built templates for things like Cubicore, ESX, uh, which you might be familiar with. However, in our case, we're going to select CFX default, which is just the absolute bare minimum that we need to get a server up and running. Um, and then, you know, if you were maybe going to use Cubicore or ESX, you could always install that later. Uh, now it's just going to prompt us for a place to throw the data. Um, it's recommended a folder called TX data on my desktop. That's fine with me for this. So go ahead and hit save. And then we're going to go to the recipe deployer. And this will just give us a preview of the recipe that it's going to execute. And if we hit next, now comes that license key that we talked about earlier, which you'll want to grab from Keymaster. So I'll just do that real quickly. Go in here, copy one of my keys, and then hit run recipe. And it'll do all the work for us. And now that things are done, we'll hit next. It'll give us the opportunity to configure our um, server.cfg config file which there might be some additional things in here that you want to drop in. Um, for me, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the locale to ENUS for US English and hit save and run server. And the first time this runs, it'll take a couple seconds. You'll see some notices about yarn. Um, that's just installing and building the chat resource. And with all of the building wrapped up, believe it or not, that's all it takes. We've got our own local 5M server now. So if we go ahead and open 5M, Towards the middle where you have supporters, history, and favorites, you'll see a new option down here, and this is going to be called whatever your local computer is called. And this is your quick connect uh, directly to your local server. So if we click that, we'll be able to jump straight in. And here we are. Believe it or not, you are now in your own 5M server. That's, uh, that's all it took. So you're not going to have a whole lot here. You're not going to have any, you know, any features, any money, um, any inventory, anything like that. You're not even going to have any weapons. But otherwise, the game works um, just kind of like you would expect free mode to. You can steal cars and rob people, and uh, guns might drop on the ground if you you know, you know wipe out a cop, something like that. You can get wanted levels. Um, so you're in your 5M server. All right, let's move on to the vanilla FX server, which is a little bit more involved. Um, we're going to do a little bit more manual config, and we're also going to need to use Git. So if you're not familiar with Git, uh, there's plenty of tutorials out there to learn a little bit about that, but you'll need that in your system just to clone the server data folder. So it starts roughly the same as the other one did where we're going to make sure we grab the latest recommended build of 5M. And then um, in my 5M folder here, I've just, I've, I've cleared out everything that we had before and I've created a new server folder. And then I'm going to drop all of this stuff from before um, into our server folder. With that out of the way, you'll also probably want to have a code editor handy. Um, I'm going to be using VS Code since it has a built-in terminal, which is really useful. And I've got my 5M folder open here, and you'll see we have our server folder with all of our stuff in it. Now, if we go back to the guide on uh, the 5M documentation, uh, we've got our git clone command here. We're just going to want to copy that and paste it into command prompt. And that'll clone our server data folder for us. And if we take a peek in here, you'll see we have some built-in resources like base events, run code, archon log, 
Map and Spawn Manager, um, and all of those goodies. Now, before TX Admin created our config file for us, in this case, we're gonna need to create it ourselves. So in my server data folder, I'm going to create a new file and call it, ser call it server.cfg. And then if we reference this page again, it has a template server CFG for us to grab. That's pretty simple. And you can certainly read through all of this and learn what each of the things do. There's only a couple changes that I'm going to make here. First is I'm just gonna change my locale to ENUS. And another one here is SVMaster1 right here. So if we, given this is a development server and I don't really want people to be able to connect to it, if I uncomment this line by removing the hash mark, then uh, this will show up as private in the server browser. People won't be able to click to connect to it. Um, obviously, we don't want random people discovering our development server and connecting to it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my max clients down to, I usually set it to three for development. That's enough for me, uh, my girlfriend, and then another tester to hop on and test things together. And then finally, the very last thing we're going to need to change is our license key, which we're going to drop this in here from Keymaster just like before. And we hit save on that. We're now ready to start our server. So unlike TX admin, we're actually gonna to need to execute a command to start our server here. And so what you're going to want to do is you're gonna to want to execute uh, the FX server.exe executable in the server folder. So for me, that's gonna be C users, Charles, desktop, 5M, server, FX server.exe. And then we're gonna do plus EXEC for execute and then our server.cfg. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to want to jump into the server data directory to make things a little bit easier. All right, and now uh, we'll execute our server.cfg, and if we hit enter, and just like the first time we started up our TX admin server, you're gonna get some yarn stuff here while it sets up the chat resource. So I'll give it just a second to finish that. And with that wrapped up, just like before, if we go ahead and open 5M, you'll find that we can connect to our local server. And once again, here we are in our local server. And uh, wow, it's placed me quite a bit away from any vehicles, but um, hopefully you'll get a better spawn point and maybe you can find a vehicle, steal it, and just kind of explore the free roam world. All right, so hopefully now you know two different ways to set up an FX server and you know the pros and cons of both of them and you can choose for yourself. You know, there's nothing wrong with using TX Admin for local development too. If you find it easier to just double click on something to run your server than running server commands, or uh, that's that's totally fine enough to you. But uh, now you're, you're empowered to run it either TX Admin or vanilla in development. Um, and I hope you found this useful. In the next episode, we're gonna dive into actually writing some code and creating our first resource. So the first thing that we're gonna do is um, we're gonna kind of try, we're gonna change the spawn logic a little bit. So we spawn in a more reliable location than randomly up in the hills. Uh, and once we learn a little bit about scripting and resource creation through the process of creating that um, spawn script, then we're gonna dive into spawning a car uh, in the episode after that. So definitely uh, follow along. We've got some great stuff coming up. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to hit like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and check the bell icon so you can get notified when the next episode comes out. And uh, yeah, there's resources down below in the description. There's also a Discord link for my personal Discord. I've got a scripting help channel in there. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to drop in. I try to be as responsive as possible. And uh, the goal is to yeah definitely grow that community and uh, make sure we have a good group of really helpful people that can build each other up. So once again, thank you for tuning in to the first episode of our Zero to Hero 5M development tutorial, and I hope to see you in the next one.